Dr. Peterson, uh, I want you to talk about the, the, deba the debanking issue we saw so much of and how that was, particularly, I guess, with the truckers and, and how that's, because I see it coming. I see it coming here and it frightens me. I want you to talk about what took place in Canada and if, if it in any way impacted you. Well, there was a essentially a working class protest against the COVID lock, extensive length of the COVID lockdowns. And one consequence of that was that Canadians who participated, even by donating to the protest and even by donating small amounts to the protest, had their bank accounts seized by seized in consequence of a collusion between the banks and the government that was extrajudicial, that was recently deemed unconstitutional, despite the fact that we don't have strong First Amendment claims. So this happened. It, the government is currently maneuvering in Canada to make the possibility of such collusion a certainty across multiple actual and potential domains of, of so-called harm, particularly in relationship to government-defined hate. Yes, this is, this is absolutely coming. And it's facilitated by the kinds of advancements in technology that we talk about today. Yeah. The fundamental significance of preserving freedom of expression and the right to engage in peaceful protests becomes evident. The recent debanking of participants in Canada's Freedom Convoy, though disconcerting, raises concerns about potential governmental overreach and collaboration with financial entities. The essence lies in individual autonomy and the unrestricted expression of one's thoughts. The debanking dilemma emerges as a threat to an individual's ability to partake in opposition movements without the looming specter of financial repercussions, thereby encroaching upon freedom itself. Amid these issues looms a broader worry regarding governments wielding increased power to stifle dissenting voices. The act of seizing bank accounts, even for modest contributions to protests, stands as an assertion of dominance, challenging the democratic bedrocks of free speech and assembly. The overarching impact extends to the realm of personal authenticity, where the fear of reprisal may induce self-censorship, a phenomenon of utmost concern. Furthermore, references to technological advancements promoting such behavior instill apprehension about the state of surveillance, pointing to a potential escalation in control over an individual's life. This manipulation of technology as a tool to suppress political dissidents is construed as a menace to individual autonomy. Elevating the discourse. The discourse turns towards the paramount significance of personal privacy. Expressing reservations about the potential misuse of technological strides to infringe upon privacy and quell political dissent is paramount. The perceived collusion between government and financial institutions is framed as a menace, threatening the privacy and authenticity inherent to individuals.